we're going to throw something funky in here for you. And what I've done here is taken some transfer paper and laminated it together, three, three, three sheets, and crumpled it up. And it got a textured palette underneath there. And I've done as a blowout base. I added a little bit of pigment to that blue uh, pigment concentrate. And we'll just go ahead. Blowout basis. It's a, another puff that, uh, look, when it cures, it's kind of like a, um, it dries to a, a, bl a blister. It's a real soft, funky feel, okay? Okay, so, again, texture. You can use um, the fluorescent lamp fixtures in the stores with the texture diffusion panels. Do that. You can use uh, the belting material like that on the belt. You get all kinds of different textures. You have the, um, Throwing this in. This is a blowout base with a little blue pigment concentrate, textured palette, and a thick, uh, thick emulsion screen, open mesh, like an 86. And since so this is going to be a real heavy deposit, we're going to have to run this through the dryer a couple times. Just like that, that cookie cake. Look at the thickness of that. Okay. Now because it's so thick, we're going to run it through the dryer, like you said, three times. If you have a longer dryer, you can just slow the belt down. You got to keep an eye on that. When it falls off the dryer, it'll touch itself and, and, and it'll stick. This one always, uh, is always a crowd pleaser for sure. That texture palette kind of changes the way you think about it, you know, because uh, most of the time you want the smoothest palette possible. You know, this uh, this on the other hand is is the opposite end of the spectrum there. So there's a, a print shop. Uh, it, they took one of those light diffusers, so we're talking a, a diamond shaped pattern, and they took a screen and screen printed a puff down to it. Well, it took on the texture of that diamond pattern. And when ran through the dryer, it looked like a lemon meringue pie. It was, you know, have the, you have the peaks. Really phenomenal print. You know, washability, again, is not too bad, especially if you run it inside out. So, the nice thing about Plastisol, once it's bonded, it's not going anywhere. really cool you know this would be advantageous I wouldn't do a whole image in that style of an ink but if you're doing highlights say for instance you're doing like a like a piece of candy or something like that and it had some areas that you needed to really highlight have little spots in there little drops and really really cool now. product very nice that blue pigment is just phenomenal okay so that's just a little something flowing and throwing in there Again, um, everything we're doing is uh, using tools. You can't build a house with one hammer. You can't uh, build a race car with one, with one wrench. You have to have and utilize all the tools and know your tools. The pallet is a tool, the dryer is a tool, the squeegee is a tool, the mesh is a tool, the emulsion is a tool, the, chemi the chemistry is tools, uh, additives and stuff. So getting to know all those things makes you um, more profitable. Okay. 
Okay, are we done with that, Nick? Yep. Okay, so that was blowout base with a little bit of blue pigment, uh, color concentrate. Take that down. Textured palette, thick emulsion. When, when you go to additives, is there any additives that you would really have to stay on top of keeping your springs clean? Well, well, they hurt your springs. Dry. Not that many, no. Other than just that nylon, you know, you just want to make sure. Um, again, that, that all boils back to the time sensitiveness of this all. I mean, there's not many inks that are, are time sensitive, so, you know, unless you're running water based, discharge, stuff like that. I wouldn't recommend picking that, keeping that black screen in the sun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. Do you think black? heat absorption, you know, anytime you're wearing black outside, you know, the drill. So, Once when it inks, reaches a certain temperature, so. the, the plasticizers start bonding together, exactly. Uh, Keith brought up a good point. Um, all the international coatings, inks that you buy, are in white containers. Well, what happens, there are manufacturers that sell a, a heat reactive ink in a black container. So, UPS pops it out on a dock, you know, in, in Arizona midsummer. It's like that ink's getting up to 180, 190 degrees. And then when it gets to a customer, of course you're gonna have issues, you know? It's a, the, the plasticizers start bonding together and then you have an ink that prints like tar, you know? Great opacity once you get it to pass through the screen, but. No, I've actually, I've actually had, well, we've had fives, even ours, even the clear uh, transparent buckets are white. They still get a little hot. And around the outside is all gelled ink, and then the inside it's good. So even yeah. if you have somebody uh, pop your pop your gallon bucket of ink on top of the dryer, tell them to knock that off, or or black ink under flashes, stuff yeah. like that. 